One of the great things about modern agriculture is it's getting easier and easier to pinpoint problem areas out in fields. 2017 is a great example when you look at iron deficiency, chlorosis, sudden death syndrome, uh, seed and seedling diseases, and many more problems that are out in the field. Now when you're marking those spots off, you can do it with your yield monitor at harvest time. You can do it when you're out there during the season as well. I encourage you, mark those areas off and then address them. Many of these problems that I've talked about so far are a result of poor drainage. And even in fields where farmers say, I've got pattern tile out in my field, how can it be poor drainage? We'll talk about identifying those little spots out in fields and fixing them for good. Yeah, it's just so funny how a lot of the problems in agriculture stem back to that drainage issue. Like even weeds, for example. I think about where do we see yellow nut sedge? Where do we see scouring rush? Well, that's predominantly in areas that have poor drainage. If I've got a problem with, oh, let's say I've got a little pocket in the field where the leaves are curling up, the plant is small, it might just be high salt. Again, that's a poor drainage issue. Maybe I have another couple of pockets in the field where I had a lot of seed or seedling disease issues. Again, poor drainage. There are just so many things that stem back to this. So there are two big things we always talk about. It's having the proper fertility out there, the right nutrients, and then good drainage in your soil. All right, so let's talk about that drainage component because as I mentioned, sometimes I'll talk to farmers and they'll say, I don't understand why I have this problem. I have pattern tile out in my field. Well, the question then becomes, when did you put the tile in? Is it in good shape and all that? And if all those answers are, are yes, everything's great, it's working just fine, then the problem may be that you've got very heavy soil. And as we go across our fields, we see soil types change uh, from lighter soils to heavier soils and that kind of thing. In general though, uh, if you're looking at, at a certain area and you say, well on my farm I've got you know, this particular soil, it doesn't vary like from a one CEC to a 50 uh, in five feet everywhere, but you may have some of those spots out on your farm. Anyway, if you've got a heavy soil, the way that we measure this and compare to other soils is looking at the cation exchange capacity on a soil test. So when Brian and I see a problem area out in our field, a lot of times we'll direct the soil sampling program to, hey, make sure we get a soil sample out of this area in the field because we want to learn what's going on there and try and fix it. Now, it may be a high salt problem like Brian mentioned, or it may just be we've got this heavy, heavy soil that doesn't drain and our 100 foot tile spacing is not going to work in a cation exchange capacity of 30. So in that case, you just need to get the lines closer together. And you know what? Unfortunately, in some cases, you might need to have lines 15 or 20 feet apart. Now, I'm not saying maybe necessarily across an entire field, but let's say you've got a lower, wetter area and you just continue to have problems. You got a CEC of 30 or 40 or 50, something like that. That is super heavy soil. You've got to have lines that are really close together. So that's the biggest thing that I would say. The next thing is, what's the depth of your tile line? So a lot of guys years ago used to put the lines in really deep. We found some stuff that's 100 years old on our farm at six feet deep. Well, it's six feet deep. It's taking forever for that water to move down there. And then when it does, um, how, how good a job are we really doing? In other words, could there be some compaction levels in between? You've got to make sure you've got compaction addressed properly. And if you can keep that tile relatively shallow, especially in those really heavy areas, those low areas that are poorly drained, keep that tile line at two and a half, three feet, something like that. Now you can move the water a little bit faster and you're going to be more efficient because you can affect that top two and a half or three feet much easier to reduce the compaction. Once you start adding more lines into your drainage system, it changes everything, right? If your lines are set up to, wow, we're gonna feed this one particular main, you may need to add another main or a bigger main into your field to be able to handle this much water leaving your field. So the reason why we're talking about this today is we really want you to get out, scout in your fields and try to figure out, hey, if I've got a drainage issue, I've got time now, I can spend the next couple of months getting everything I need to do for approvals, making the plan, getting somebody lined up to do the tiling or hopefully you have your own tile plow like we do on our farm. And then when fall hits, as soon as that crop comes off, you're ready to go, you can get the drainage addressed. And then a lot of these problems are gonna to start to go away in time. Well, addressing these specific drainage problems out in your field can definitely help your farm get more yield. So can controlling our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop this tough wheat later in the show. <music>